Greetings, chess players. My name is Chris Torres. This is Daily Chess Musings, and this is the free online Summer Chess Camp July edition. It is the 10 o'clock hour Pacific time, and I am here to play a little bit of chess um, with you guys. And I don't know why. I keep highlighting my uh, my borders. I don't want to accidentally adjust anything. Um, so again, let me type my name into chat. Um, so you want to friend request. Oops, not fiend, friend. Friend request and challenge Coach Tortoise on chess.com. And there we go. Um, let's see. Also, you know, go ahead and click the follow on Twitch. It helps us out at the channel. Let me get started here. I was typing in uh, Twitch, and now there's my chess.com window. Got it. All right, and we do one thing, there we go. And I see some challenges. Um, okay, Shriyanch, you are up at bat first. Let's see, let's see what's gonna happen today. Start with E4. So we both have a pawn in the center. I develop a, a knight. This is all very, very standard. He develops the knight. Um, let's see. I'll go Italian. And this move does stop any potential, you know, uh, if you play knight f6, then I could do a fried liver maybe. Maybe you're afraid of that, so you play h6 first. My arrows are drawing a little too fast. Um, but it doesn't, doesn't really, really bug me too much. Um, in fact, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of proceed with a, a, a common Italian move, which is c3, preparing to push d4. So I go ahead and do that. Take, take. Now the bishop's on b4 with check. I play knight c3. And my knight is pinned momentarily, but I do intend to castle. Now, this h6 and this d6 move are um, good for black in that they are stopping my knight on f3 um, from moving closer to my opponent's king. He's controlling some important uh, dark squares over there. Uh, Let's see. I'm going to castle. I'm going to get out of that pin. I want to castle anyways. <laughs> Looks like black's going to castle too. Black's got a, 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 a solid yet uh, um, very defensive setup. I obviously control more space. Um, let's see if I can do something with my space advantage. So far, I'm not spotting. Let's see. Uh, I'm looking, you know, I'm, I'm starting to look closely at uh, queen b3, although unfortunately then my opponent would castle. Um, and then uh, they get to play the knight a5 up, but they can't because the bishop would be hanging. But they would castle out of it. Um, so queen b3 is a potential, a potential move. Obviously, getting this bishop out would make a lot of sense as well. Uh, and where should that bishop go? Maybe e3? Um, so it's defended. It could go to f4, but it would not be a defended piece then. So I'm going to play bishop e3. And 
There's a couple different uh, avenues that I can use to attack this kind of structure. Um, one of them would be unifying my rooks and attacking h6 twice right off the bat since f7 is pinned by my bishop. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. It does step into this pin, so that's the downside. Every move in chess has a, a plus and a minus, a positive and a negative. There's a nice push to the center with, with a fork. Um, normally, I would just take this with my pawn. And I think I, um, actually it would be inviting more pressure to the, uh, to the pin, wouldn't it? Uh, let's see, let's see here. I still think it's probably best to take with the, uh, with the pawn. All right, we'll go ahead and take. This is an interesting game. Uh, we, we've, uh, I've played uh, Shriyansh before, and uh, it's always an interesting game. Okay. Get my, get my bishop out of trouble. Here comes the more pressure on the pin. We saw that coming, though. There's the bishop sack for two pawns. And then there we go. So my opponent's king is uh, very much exposed and his pieces are not really coordinated that well. The knight comes back to defend um, I think I should bring another knight up to attack potentially, but I have, I have other things. I mean, this opens the avenue for some, uh, for some checks. I can move this knight closer. Oh, let's see here. I'm going to move this, this knight a little bit closer. Knights are close range attackers. We get the them rolling early in the opening. I like to the the common um, strategy is to develop a knight before a bishop because they take a little bit longer to get to where they're going. Okay, I thought this might happen. He moves his knight closer to my king, but also threatening my queen. It's a serious move. And a serious move requires a serious response. All right. getting a lot of force aimed at his uh, exposed king. Oh, okay, he's, he's trying to get that bishop in, but this is a slow move. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I mean, I can threaten checkmate a couple different ways. Should I do it with the F knight or the E knight? This is a good question. The E knight um, adds even more pressure, though. The F knight um, gets two knights within the vicinity. It's, it's a good question. We'll go like this. All right. So something needs to be done about h7.
Hmm. And that is something to be done about h7. Nice job finding the correct move. Uh, let's see. So we're going to play h3. Get that knight to move away. And it does not have as much safety as it would like, for sure. Interesting. Okay, I am going to take the, the knight here. I, and he goes like that. And then I am going to, wait, 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 wait. There's a, there's a couple different ways I can go about things here. And I should really consider my, my options. Uh, I actually taking with the pawn is starting to look better to me. It opens up another can of worms. All right. Okay, and if I take the queen goes there, so that's not gonna, that's not gonna have enough enough force um, exactly to get this this job done. I would like to play g4 and then g5, but I would also like to use a rook elevator. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead with the uh, g4 idea. Keeping the f pawn in place because this is weak and I don't want him to take while delivering check. All right, so hey, good move, I think. And uh, um, yeah, I haven't touched this rook yet. I'll go ahead and touch it, put it in the same file as my opponent's queen. Things are really heating up now. I want to play g5. And then uh, knight c6, so I'm going to go ahead and play my g5 move. If you see me doing stuff with my neck, I, I injured my uh, back and neck a little while ago. Um, and it's been a little uncomfortable, to say the least. Uh, I'm very close to delivering a checkmate here, but I'm also down to two minutes. So I'm looking at my checks, captures, and threats, and really, um, really taking, taking my time, because I, I sense that if I find the right combination, g6 is calling to me and threatens checkmate right off the bat. So I'm going to go with it. I could take back, but then he's going to take on f2, and I see this. So I'm going to throw in, no, I'm not going to throw in knight g5. That would be silly. That would be silly, Chris. All right, so I'm going to go here. My knight is defending f2 as well, and I'm very close to uh, delivering checkmate. And I see some challenges uh, coming in. <clears throat> so maybe uh, some people are sensing that maybe I have a, uh, a finale here. I don't, uh, I mean, his king's going to escape. And it's, it's a little uncomfy. And 
he's got he's got this other check. All right, we we just got to go with this. And then uh, why am I not seeing the the finale below here? What what did I do wrong? Did I do something wrong? I I may have. I mean, my knight can come back. I'm gonna hmm. Thirty-five seconds. Uh oh. I better get going. I better, I better get uh, a move on with my, with my strategy. All right. Twenty-seven seconds. I'm gonna start playing a little bit faster now. Oh, I cannot block that because um, F2 is pinned. That's a shame. Oh no. I see. I see what's going to happen here. I made a mistake with the bishop c2. Yep. But at least there's no uh, there's no fork on the uh, rook and queen right now. His queen's under attack. His rook's under attack. I have 14.8 seconds, and I'm very close to a checkmate. Very very close. And there's a check. And there's a pin. Ten seconds. We are very, very close. And I should take. Oh, he took with his bishop. Okay, good for him. Good for him. And I'm going to go here. To defend my bishop. Three seconds. Not a lot of time. Two seconds. I think I'm going to lose this one on time. I think it... Yeah. Ah, uh, lost on time. But good game! Good game. I was I was close. I felt uh, I felt like I you know had had this one in hand. I just took a little too much time. All right, next game. Excellent. Uh, good job, uh, Shriansh. I think that's the first time you've uh, you've gotten me. Let's uh, go to. Up. Oh, looks like we got. I love Gotham chess up next and he makes a move I'll make a move d4 d5 c4 queen's gambit and e5 queen's gambit declined Albin and let's see interesting so Albin, uh, Al Albin counter gambit declined. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave the tension here. So he can still take it. I'm still allowing. And he still doesn't want it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and flex. And grab a little bit more space. I haven't moved a piece yet. And, okay, everything, everything closed. Really? Really? Okay. Wow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play f5. Everything's closed. And then uh, my idea is knight f6, um, bishop e7, and castle. Have a little bit more space. With such a, a, a closed uh, a start to the game, I can lean back and uh, drink my my coffee. Um, let's see, Knight F6. There's no no early tactics here. Ah, 
smart, smart move. He's got some uh, squares that knight can go to, even though it's on the rim right now. Get myself castled. I have a little bit more space than my opponent. Get my other knight in the game. And he does. He brings his uh, his knight a little bit closer. All right. Looking for looking for my my big my big plan here. I want to do an attack on his king because my pawn structure is pointed in this way. This the king side is where I have more space. It's pointing. Um, I should attack over there. So uh, first of all, this is a threat too. By the way, it's not so not so innocent. Um, This is a little bit annoying, this threat here, because I can easily deal with it if my knight's not here, but I'm not ready. Do I have to waste tempo in this opening? Did I, did I mess up this bad to waste some tempo like this? Kind of looks that way. All right. So he's threatening this fork, and it's, it's, it's annoying. Um, and I could go back and admit that I, I made a mistake, or... I'm going to sack my knight for two pawns and guard against the uh, guard against the um, knight intrusion, and then set up a very powerful attack. Okay, so now that knight comes to threaten my bishop. I don't like that. I move my bishop back to where it should be, aimed over here. Queen moves, okay. And I guess that means my knight can come and say hello. Opening up uh, um, some possibilities some weaknesses, even if he sends my knight packing right away, which it looks like he is. Um, it's not without creating the weakness first. And I'm going to go this way so that my queen's line is still open, the diagonal. And then I'm going to play g5. So I'm attacking in the direction my pawn structure is pointed. And he's willing to give the knight the material back. That's a pretty uh, uh, bold strategy. Was his knight trapped? No. It could have gone here. Um, is this a good diagonal for this bishop? Absolutely. Absolutely it is. Without question. Um, I'll go ahead and take. Things could get uncomfortable for me with a bishop on an open diagonal like this. Let's see, I'm going to take again. Hmm. All right, so why would his bishop go there? It's because his queen wants to go here and be mean. Threaten checkmate, right? This is why. This is why. 
So I need to be very careful here because there are two different mating squares that are possibilities. Let me take some time, analyze the checks, captures, and threats. I see, I see his threat very clearly. This is a little bit tricky. Um, I'm, you know, I think I can put my queen on g5 to deal with the g7 threat that's coming. And then play knight f7 to deal with the h8 threat. And that seems, that seems to work. I'm going to go ahead this route. Queen g5. I took some time there. I told you this bishop. Yep, yeah, there's that. There's that. So I have the big threat now from my opponent. And then what I had worked out in my mind is that now knight f7 guards against one checkmate. Well, queen g5 guards against another. And I'm setting up. Okay, this is nice little distraction. Um, I'm gonna. Is he gonna sack his bishop next? Is that the, is that the plan here? If I play queen g6, can he play bishop h4 or h5? Oh, interesting. I better look at my checks, captures, and threats again. This one's not so innocent. It looks easy to deal with, but actually his bishop, um, even though it's a sacrifice, if my queen takes it, I get checkmated on g7. And if... I think, yeah, I gotta be very, very careful. Man. All right, so queen goes here. And I'm expecting bishop h5. To threaten the knight, perhaps. My opponent has a lot of pressure on me. Good for them. You see how powerful this open uh, dark diagonal is here? The a1, h8 diagonal. When he got his bishop on that diagonal, um, you know, I think probably a lot of us have been hurt um, when we allow our opponent to control a diagonal like that. I know I have. <sighs> These are some tough games this morning. I lost the first one on time. All right, and I believe that's a mistake because I can put my bishop onto the diagonal now. And this relieves a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. Because we would presume that his queen would leave the diagonal and then um, if I want to, I could trade bishops with him right now. Um, but I don't, you know, let's see. I think it's actually better to, let me see here. Let me see here. I'm going to, I'm going to set up something a little tricky myself. All right. So I, I um, 
added defense to my bishop, formed a battery, and my queen is in the same file as my opponent's king. So I like this and this. All right, and now, which of these two pieces is a close range attacker? Why, my knight is, so I'm going to move my knight closer within checking distance, as I like to say. And he immediately pins it. Good for you. But um, let us see. So I'm going to watch, watch this. I see some tactics. The queen is set up um, on the same diagonal as mine. I can play a discovered check. The problem is his knight is defending his queen still, right? So I'm going to attack the knight. And we'll see what happens. My opponent has some difficult, uh, difficult uh, decisions to make here. It's always fun playing uh, chess with uh, um, people in the in the chess camp. Um, I've been running summer chess camps for a very long time, over a couple decades, right? And uh, some of the all right. So he moves he moves off that threat, but see, this is going to allow me to win a knight, right? So I I go up I go up big time material. Let me go back. So I mean, if he moves the knight anywhere. Um, if he moves the knight anywhere here, if this moves, then I immediately play that, and I'm going to get his queen. Um, so this is why, this is why he went this way. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and push this pawn one more step. Remember, my queen was also in the same file as his king. So you can see this queen g7 um, move that I played has really come to help me a lot. Should I open things up? No, because then we'll, we'll probably be trading pieces. Instead, um, I'm going to go ahead and just take control of this, all the light squares over here. So my pawn structure has actually, every pawn has like moved up, moved up, um, which is quite, quite interesting. And then uh, I'm going to put my queen up here and threaten check there and then checkmate. But two really good games so far. I mean, two really good games. I'm super enjoying the chess this morning. This is what I like. Um, and if you know, if you haven't yet, uh, go ahead and click the follow. We are now at 118 followers. Let's get that number up a little bit. Okay, so. What is my most accurate response here? I think taking with the knight and saying check. My knight takes the dark squares and my queen takes the light squares. Um, I'm going to go grab myself a bubble water. I'll be right back and accept somebody's challenge. I'll be right back.
Yeah. Uh, hydration is important. Um, you know, I'm sitting in front of a uh, computer. It heats up when I'm doing a broadcast. Um, and uh, yeah, you want to make sure if you're playing chess that you are you are well hydrated. All right, so let me see if I can see who else is challenging me right now. And I can. Um, let's go ahead to um, this one right here, Rosa Craft uh, 101. All right. Let's see what we have in store. I'll play E4. Scandinavian. Awesome. Except I'm going to play D4. So Scandinavian declined. And then uh, um, I'll go ahead. I'm going to leave the tension here again. I did this in, a, in a, uh, at least one game today. And then um, I'll go ahead and expand my pawn structure a little bit further. Again, look at the direction my pawns are pointed toward the uh, toward the king side. Um, so it means I'm going to be playing for you know advantage on that side of the board because that's where I have more space. Pay attention to the direction your pawns are pointed. And, uh, okay, this, if I take, it could come back to bite me. It damages, but he's not going to castle that way then. Um, and then he can, he can use his rook in the G file. So I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to hesitate on that just for a little bit. Um, this is starting to shape up a little bit like the last game. Except I haven't played F4. So even if his knight were to come down here, it wouldn't have the, the threat. I'm going to go ahead and play knight d2. I'm castled. I have a little bit more space than my opponent. It looks like my opponent might be thinking about castling queenside, but we don't know yet. Um, one thing I do know is I want to unify my rooks, so I'm going to move my queen up, um, coordinating with my bishop on d3. When your opponent, excuse me, when your opponent is uh, fianchettoed, um, you can counter the fianchetto. Um, you know, a common way is to uh, form a battery with your queen and bishop and get rid of that uh, that uh, fianchetto. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and move my rook to d1. So this gives my knight this f1 square, and then uh, my king's super safe, and then I can develop my bishop. My rooks are unified. Hmm. No, no, no. I am not going to allow that pawn to get pushed, because then everything kind of gets closed off. And we just played a, a very closed game. So I will go ahead and take, simply to keep things a little bit more exciting for our viewers. His king is fairly exposed now. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do what I said I would do, move my knight there. And I think I'll take the free knight. He did not see the discovered attack. Um, pretty sure I mentioned it. I try and mention what I'm thinking. Okay. So now, um, this is pinned, so I believe I can just take this now, because he hasn't castled yet. Hmm. 
water is helping refresh my brain a little bit. And this is going to be trouble because, see, I take here, and now I'm pinning the queen to the king. And even if he returns the favor with a pin, I take the queen with check. And there's the, yeah, and then I take with check. And now I need to save my queen. There's a couple different ways I can go about it. Um, but I'm kind of inclined to go to C2 so that I have access over there. I could also, you know, bring my knight back into play, F1 to E3. Uh, knight E5, check. He's got me a little overpowered on the square, but it would open his king up. I'm going to go with Queen C2. It just looks just looks easiest to me. Okay, and now uh, I think um, knight e5 check looks awfully good. Also uh, bishop g7 and then knight e5 check. Looks pretty good, but I'm going to go knight e5 check right away. I'm trying to open the d-file on this king. If he takes, I'm opening the d-file. If he doesn't take, then uh, then my knight's up in a very dangerous spot for my opponent. Hmm. Okay, he does not take. But he doesn't go straight back, because if he went straight back, I'd have a nice little fork there. Nice little fork. Um... I'm going to go ahead, let's see, this piece is, is kind of not so great for me. Wouldn't it be nice to get the other knight moving up there? Yeah, yes, yes it would. Let's go ahead and do that right now, okay? Bring in a second piece in the game. There were some other lines I could have played there, but... I want to use, I want to utilize all my pieces. Okay, and so here, here is this uh, um, trading offer. Do I like it? Uh, sure. Take, take, take. And then it, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. I, I go here with check. So it may it may seem like there's not a lot of excitement right now, um, but that is not the case. My opponent's remaining pieces are perfectly placed. He's just got one pawn that's trouble for him. His rooks are very dangerous. His bishop is very dangerous. And this bishop could be, whoops, that's the wrong diagonal. Um, it could be, if not for this one pawn. Um, so, it's not so simple. You still have to be careful, even though I'm up by 12 points in material. Let me try and get rid of these things. What's going on with... I think my mouse is misfiring, too. I drew so many arrows that I couldn't, I couldn't see the board, really. Um, I 
I think moving my knight up here makes a good amount of sense. However, he can threaten my queen. Um, but yeah, you know, mo moving my knight closer. And my knight is also defending my bishop. I'm very, you know, I, we've all been around um, long enough to have um, had games completely won in terms of material, but lost because our opponent's remaining forces are perfectly placed. And his, his, his attack is, is fairly close to ideal, um, except for the fact that he's got, you know, a pawn blocking... All right. Yeah, and this this is uh, I stepped into a a, a tactic. See, you got to be you got to be careful. I stepped into a tactic. Um. Looks like I'm gonna lose some material here for sure. Bad job, Coach Chris. Bad job. I think I'm going to trade my queen for his rook. <clears throat> when you're up so many points in material, you can afford to do some negative value trades. And uh, I didn't want to, but I was kind of forced to. You try and hang on to too much value, and you will find yourself in trouble. Now he's only got a bishop and rook. Um, I've got a bishop and two rooks. And so um, relieve pressure with some negative value trades. But nicely done. I mean, you know, uh, forming that, that kind of attack and spotting the, the tactic. Um, it just, you know, I, I was just a little too much ahead in material for it to, for it to work the way you wanted. Um, but it was very nicely done. So I'm going to um, form a battery, coordinate my rooks. I figured he might do this so my bishop can just go back. And now the threat is on his bishop. I returned the threat by putting an extra barrier. And then I'll slide this rook over. Rooks are coordinated. And let's see. Now I got them coordinated vertically. Let's get them coordinated horizontally on the ring. So I want to move this rook up to the seventh rank. Now I'm threatening the bishop twice. He's defending it twice. Um, I could do like a zoog swing thing here a little. Bit. No, his rook could dawdle. Darn it. I thought I could do like a, a cool little zoog swing. Um, on the other side of the coin, I can just start pushing this pawn. <sighs> he cannot do anything to uh, that I see. I mean, he's, he's obligated to defend his material in my H pawn. Is a pass pawn. And he scoots a pawn forward. I'll scoot a pawn forward. He scoots a pawn forward. I'll scoot a pawn forward.
he scoots a pawn forward. Paul scoot a pawn forward. He scoots a pawn forward. And I will what will I do here? Let's see. I got I got a couple different uh, couple different uh, paths. What would be most fun and exciting? Most fun and exciting. I'll go this this path. He goes there. All right. So he's got a runaway pawn, but I get a queen. Hmm. Let's see here. I'm gonna go this route first. Check. Yeah, this computer gets pretty hot. Pretty hot indeed. And that moves away. Um, and then have a check mate fancy somewhere no not that I see I'm just gonna um, stop his uh, pawn with my bishop again having the extra material and uh, the extra material was got not from you know superior strategy um, just from Simple oversights by my opponent, you know, the not seeing the discovered um, attack started on the, on the night, started a, a series of uh, problems. All right, I take, he gets to take with check. Good for you. You got to check me. And look at that. Look, look, what, look what he's up to. That's cute. He returns back. I go here. He can even check me again. I mean, it's it's there. Um, I'm going to throw in this check. So I've seen, you know, I've seen some really nice um, chess. Uh, you know, like I said, the, the first game I lost uh, um, on time, my opponent used his clock better than me. Um, and uh, this this particular game, um, I don't want to make that same mistake, so I throw in another check here. He's got to go back, and then I have checkmate. Um, yeah, again, I let my clock run down maybe more than I than I should have. Um, but, you know, my opponent made a simple uh, uh, Rosset Craft 101, uh, just missed one discovered um, threat. Um, but otherwise, you know, played a really good game. All three of my opponents played well. Um, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the experience a lot. And um, I will, uh, We'll see, you know, maybe we'll have time to do this one more time during camp and I can play some more of you. If not, that's okay because uh, guess what? I can still play with you even if it's not during camp. I can just make an announcement on dailychessmusings.com of when I will be going live. So make sure, you know, you follow me on dailychessmusings.com because then you'll know. Make sure you follow me on Twitch because then you'll know. If I go live, I'll go live um, on Twitch. Also, even if I'm not uh, broadcasting, sometimes I'm on chess.com and do play some casual games with my um, friends and students. Um, again, uh, if, if you're just checking out the, the channel for the first time, um, my name is, uh, is Chris Torres. This is Daily Chess Musings. And this is our free online summer chess camp, um, July edition. It's all free. 
you can find out everything you need to know about our free online summer chess camp um, at dailychessmusings.com. And uh, um, yeah, you guys uh, uh, did great. I, I really had a good time. And uh, I will see you again um, tomorrow. And I'll be watching. I'll be watching as you play your uh, tournament games this afternoon. One final reminder. Remember when you go to your tournament game, when you go to your tournament game, follow the link and click join the tournament. If you don't do that, the tournament will start without you. Um, also remember, we do have a I Missed My Round tournament in the afternoon. Um, so it's a good chance for you to get some extra credit points. Um, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us for this uh, hour of uh, chess. And I will see you next time. So long, everybody. Bye.